John here guys and today we're talking about the FPV cycle Cinesplore. The Cinesplore and this is with the FPV cycle 2203 motors which are really the secret component to finally having a Cinewhoop formula that flies I won't say like a five inch, cause it's not even anywhere close to that, but a Cinewhoop platform that can carry a full size GoPro, in this case, the very heavy, but super high quality uh, picture Hero 9, and still have the control and maneuverability that you want. Now, why do I say that? Well, here is a Diatone taken two and a half inch version. And this thing really struggles with its 1404 size motors and two and a half inch props to carry the weight of this. In fact, I would say that you can actually fly it smooth, but it just doesn't have the speed or the controllability or the battery life to be able to really fly it the way that you're gonna wanna fly it. In fact, I noted on my review of this that I would just feel more comfortable flying a five inch um, with the extra weight because I control it so much better. I'd be more confident not to hit something. So what I really wanted out of a Cinewhoop formula was something that had the protection to be able to fly close to something confidently, but still the power enough so you can maintain control. Because when you get these things so overloaded with weight, they just don't have the control anymore. So this would be a great formula for an Insta360 or a naked GoPro, but if you wanna carry the full size and have enough battery life, you really need something more like this. And interestingly enough, you can see how close the size is. So why even bother with this when this barely takes up any more additional space? I mean, you see that right there? There are a lot of frames in this size. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention the frame that really started this all, which is the Shindrone Squirt. But the reason I really wanted to go with this was, I think it's a little bit lighter. Um, it has a variety of prop options that you can use, and it also has a variety of duct options that you can use. Now, the reason I say that is because the shin drones, to get that really super tight combination of prop size and duct size, you have to trim those props. That's such an annoyance to me. It's something that I'm just not willing to do. So for those that do, you can probably take advantage of that. But I wanted a full three inch size prop for that extra power that you get with another little extra disc size. And I wanted to be able to experiment with printing my own ducks out of different material. You can also buy these ducks directly from FPV Cycle, or you can buy the ducks from the Cloud 349 that I reviewed on the channel because they are the same. I printed these ducks out of PETG. This is a really nice, strong, um, it's a little bit stronger than PLA. Um, it's, it's, fle it's somewhat flexible if you print it very thin like that. You can see there is some flex, but it's fairly rigid. It just has, it's like PLA, but a little bit stronger. So you print it at a little bit higher temperature. So if you have an Ender 3 or something like that, um, it might be a little difficult to print, but you should still be able to manage it if you go slow. On my Prusa, this printed flawlessly. I mean, it looks like something you would buy. Uh, and, but you, if you don't have an $800 3D printer, you can buy these directly from FPV Cycle as well. Now, the other nice thing that I liked about this frame is there are a variety of other accessories. You can see the uh, Cadex Vista camera mount that I have right here um, that is available on Thingiverse. You can see the Hero style um, clamp in connector that you can use to mount your GoPro at the front like I have. I printed this one in a black TPU, a very cheap material. We're having lots of deals in the FPV sales alerts group on Facebook on 3D printing accessories and filament if you want to stay tuned to that. Um, the other nice thing about this is that the components that you can fit, it is sized for a 20 by 20 or a toothpick size board. And that's what I'm going with right here. I actually have my toothpick board mounted in the rear. I'm using the Diatone 25 amp version on this build. I have a Crossfire Immortal T receiver that I was just kind of zip tied to the bottom. There are some mounts out there, but this works fine for my needs. It's not the best antenna mounting as far as reception, but I'm not gonna fly this you know, 10 miles away. So this is perfectly fine for anywhere up until probably like a mile maybe. Um, and then of course I have the Cadex Vista up at the front and the Vista camera. This build is really nice and easy to go with. It, 
you need the brass inserts if you're going to print these ducks on your own. If you've ever used the Heli Nation talent stack, you actually already have a bunch of those brass inserts, little inserts that they have to be able to adapt M2 to M3. Those are the same kind of screws you would use here. And so to get these into the ducts after you've printed them, you just put them kind of in place, get your soldering iron heated up and it'll just slowly sink. And you just let a little bit of weight go on there until it's right at the right place. Then your M2 screws go. You have three screws per duct. <clears throat> I've uh, put this thing through some flights, through some bumps, and there are three notes that I really like about this duct design and the PETG. So the PETG did not crack even with a few light crashes. That's important. If it did crack, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, I do like that it is more rigid than TPU. A lot of times if you have a TPU duct, it'll actually give you some good protection, but it will buckle. And if it buckles far enough to be able to hit that prop, that one motor is going to seize and you're going to fall out of the air. This has enough um, rigidity and flexibility that you can bounce off if you're at a slow enough speed. It won't impede the props and you won't fall out of the air. And the ticket to that is actually the duct design, the material that I printed with the PTG, and also the strength of these motors. Sometimes if you even just wobble it enough, if it doesn't have enough power, you're gonna fall out of the air anyway. This one has the power. That's why this 2203 size motor with a standard M5 nut prop on top is really significant. Now, the other key to this formula that I found is I'm using these six blade uh, whoop three inch props. I believe these are the HQ. Now these props are really special. A couple of things that I like about them, they're very, very light and flexy. And uh, that is not going to be great for durability, but it is going to be great if you actually were to hit something. So I was noting on one of the Facebook groups, I flew, um, Yvonne wanted to put a little obstacle with his arms and have me fly through it. I really kind of refused, but he was insisting and I was like, all right, let's try it. One thing I noted was um, to do a trick like that, I would really want these props because they are going to break um, before hurting someone. Um, some of your harder, more durable props, especially like a gym fan flash or something like that, those are very hard and very sharp. Would not want to fly um, something like that on one of these if you're going to be close to people. Those are really good performing props, but the whole thing around this is be, to be able to fly proximity as safe as possible. The other thing that you're going to get is that by having these extra blades, um, look at the shape of these blades. They're very flat, and they're very thin. So that's gonna have the least amount of damage, at least that's what I am guessing. Um, to fly these flights, I'm using a Tattoo 1050 milliamp 4S pack. These are very inexpensive and great packs. If you're flying any four or five inch micro long range and you don't want to spring for like a 50 or $60 um, Li Lion pack, on those formulas, like the Shocker 5 inch, I used this same type of pack and got 11 minutes. And this is like 16, 17 bucks for these. So really great battery. Using the Hero 9, like I said, of course. And... This is just a great Cinewoop option. A lot of guys are always asking, Cinewoop, Cinewoop, Cinewoop. It seems to be the craze. Now, make no mistake, these, I wouldn't say are fun to fly, um, but this is the most fun because it has the most control, the most power. I'm not gonna go doing power loop freestyle tricks with this thing. This is a specific purpose. It is to be able to carry a high quality camera. In this case, the Hero 9 is close to somebody. So I have some footage where I followed my buddy Yvonne, one of the top racers in the country. He got 10th at the Multi GP Nationals. He decided to borrow another type of quad and take it flying on the track and I was able to follow him around with this. Now that was one of my first flights trying to go at this speed. So I was very impressed that I was able to still get a battery life of three and a half to four minutes, even flying with all this weight and going very fast. Now, since in my other testing, I was flying much slower, my camera angle was, I should have raised a little bit to be able to keep up with him. So there's a few instances where he's going really fast for this type of camera angle. You can see I'm only got about 10 or 15 degrees right there. But I was super impressed that not only did this have the power to carry it around, but it could actually use that much battery life. And while I was flying fairly fast, normally with a Cinewoop, I wouldn't think to fly that quickly. You can see my buddy Matt is zipping around in his five inch 
and I'm really kind of pushing it. Now, if I did have a little more camera angle, I could have went faster, um, but just all in all, guys, the cost of this frame is what, 30, 35 bucks? If you print your own ducks, I mean, that's it. You're ready to start building. These motors though by FPV Cycle are really the key ingredient. So great job on that. Finally, a Cinewhoop that doesn't drag. I've been reviewing four or five Cinewhoops on the channel so far, and they all just, I mean, Cinewhoop flies like Cine poop, but this one flies nice. What do you think in the comments, guys? What type of Cinewhoop are you flying? Um, do you like the Cinesplore? Are you flying something else? Are you buying one of those binder flies? There's some really good deals on those in the FPV Sales Alerts group. Um, some that were selling for barely the, above the cost of a Vista. What are you guys doing to get that footage? Do you like to fly Cinewhoops for fun? Or is it like I consider them just a tool to get a very specific and awesome shot? Thanks, guys. Well, Kevin.